Hey everyone and welcome to The Sandbox. The time is upon us once again. It's spooky season. I have some great videos planned for October and to start it off, I wanted to give you horror veterans out there some films to consider adding into your rotation this year. Now this list is now what is the scariest idea in a horror film like The Thing or The Strangers and it's not what was the scariest film when it first came out like The Blair Witch Project or Jaws. Those are all scary in their own right, and every person has their own list of fears and films that rattle them to their core. But these films today are not situational. No, these are five modern horrors that scared the bejesus out of me, and I'm as desensitized as it gets. Now, these might not be the best films thematically or have the best character development that the genre has to offer, but I can promise you that these films will stick with anyone long after the credits have rolled. Starting off at number 5 is one of the most tormenting first watches I've ever had, Oculus. Now there's a great chance that you guys have probably seen this one or heard a lot about it already, but this has definitely earned a spot on my list for its brilliant craftsmanship and story. Mike Flanagan has certainly made a name for himself, especially lately with the Netflix hit series Haunting of Hill House and now Haunting of Bly Manor, but Flanagan first became popular with his films Absentia and Oculus, which was based off of a horror short of the same name. This film follows brother and sister Kaylee and Tim, who plan to document the twisted and diabolical tricks that a supernatural mirror plays on its victims, the same mirror that Kaylee is convinced killed her mother. Now I won't say anything more to avoid spoilers. The thing that makes this film so terrifying is that while it weaves two storylines together, the nightmarish events in the past and the present, Flanagan is sure to give you just enough information, one piece at a time, to further build your intrigue in the characters and the story while not giving away too much as to spoil the last act. And for me, the movie was so brilliantly done that it wasn't until the very last moments of the climax that I started to piece it all together like, hey, I think I know what's going- <coughs> And that last one, that last scare, that's the one that made this film leave a lasting impression on me. Next up at number 4 is a recent one I just watched, Eden Lake. This psychological thriller follows a couple on a getaway to a nearby quarry to get some romantic alone time. However, their plans turn sour when a gang of teenagers start to harass them. This one is terrifying for two main reasons, the first being that the circumstances are entirely in the realm of possibility. The events in this movie are surely far-fetched and very sinister, but there's no supernatural entity at play here, just people being absolute a-holes. The second reason is that the couple is very likable. When you have extremely likable or relatable characters, it makes any dire situation that much worse. I mean, if they so much as stub their toe, you're gonna feel horrible for them. And Eden Lake pulls no punches. The events that follow are terrifying and gruesome, and putting yourself into their shoes is the scariest thing you could do with this one. Now, if you do decide to watch it and enjoy it, I've heard Funny Games is similar, though I haven't seen it yet and probably won't for a while. After Eden Lake, I need to break from anything remotely similar. Coming in at number three is actually a big franchise film that I thought delivered a near flawless execution, The Conjuring 2. Acting wise, music wise, tone, color gradient, lighting, it's all so perfectly constructed to create the most intense atmosphere. The setting is a simple house in London with a ghost haunting its inhabiting family, but the movie slowly evolves into such a bigger story. The Conjuring movies are especially scary because, again, even though it is supernatural, the inclusion of the church as a character makes the events so much more real and possible. Plus, the movie starts off with based on real events, which makes it ten times more frightening because there's nothing stopping you from becoming the next case that people write books and movies about. Another component that further escalates the tension with this one is the possibility that the girl is creating a hoax in the public eye, which we all know isn't the case and could lead to dire consequences if left undealt with. Now what makes this the third most terrifying film I've seen is that while the Warrens are strong characters and have established their credibility and competency in the first film, this film strips them of these securities for the viewer. Light spoilers ahead so feel free to skip ahead to the timestamp below. But, the climactic scene here isolates the Warrens, blinds Ed, and gives Lorraine a premonition of his death. 
Knowing his death is an entirely real possibility makes it that much more terrifying because, again, the Warrens are super likable characters. It just ties everything together so masterfully and uses all the horror tools in the tool belt. Now yes, realistically speaking, we should expect them to win in the end, but again, the atmosphere is so thick here, you're too scared to think logically. The visuals, the music, the acting all make you hyper-focused on what's currently happening on screen. Next up at number two is Hereditary. This is another low-budget indie horror that is so gruesome and dark and nerve-wracking that it comes off as more sad than scary at times. The characters here aren't the most likable, in all honesty. The brother is a tad selfish, the sister is a lot weird, and the mom fears her own son. The dad is just kind of there serving as a soft voice of reason, but he easily gets drowned out by the dark entities at play with this film. The reason this film is so terrifying is not likable characters, but the themes it plays with. Isolation, helplessness, guilt. The characters feel so lonely, and when there's nothing else to latch onto, guess what the audience is gonna feel? You guessed it. And that's how this film gets under your skin. And once it grabs hold of you, every shocking image, every loud sound, every dissonant note in the soundtrack will rattle you to your core. Before I share my number one, I wanted to announce that the last video for October will be a ranking video for one of two franchises, first one being The Conjuring Universe, and the second one being Jurassic Park World Franchise. Let me know down in the comments below which one you'd prefer to see. I'll tally up all the comments and likes to decide the winner. But by far the scariest film I've seen and honestly would recommend avoiding has got to be The Green Inferno. I went into this one having no idea what it was about, so I'll leave that as a possibility for you guys in case you're crazy enough to watch it, so spoilers ahead. This film is about a group of college social activists who plan a trip to the Amazon rainforest. However, their plane crash lands and they're taken captive by a tribe of cannibals. This film pulls no punches, showcasing grotesque and violent acts. It doesn't cut to a character to show their reaction as something horrible happens off screen. No, it makes you watch it yourself and sidelines those reactions. Every scene is a gut punch. It's terrifying. The characters are relatively likable, the tribe's people are creepy looking, and the driving force of hopelessness makes this easily the scariest film I've ever seen. I was a college sophomore when I watched it, and it took me a solid week or two to fully recover from the psychological scars that this film inflicted on me. Well, that's my list. If you're crazy enough to watch them, or if you've seen them already, let me know what you thought of them down in the comments below. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you all next time. Mwah! <laughs>